All right, this problem presents us with a situation where we have a collision, a bullet running into a block, and then we have rotation after that. Um, whenever, anytime you see a collision, you should think law of conservation of momentum, and since we have rotation here, this is, this is gonna involve the law of conservation of angular momentum. So actually, first part just asks us to find the total rotational inertia um, of the block, rod, and bullet system around point A. Point A is up here. So we have the rotational inertia of the rod. And so really the only way to do this is by adding their individual rotational inertias together. So we already have the one for the rod. We just have to figure out the rotational inertia of the bullet and the rotational inertia of the block. Now it does say uh, very specifically to treat the block as a particle. And basically that means that uh, you know the formula for rotational inertia of a particle is mr squared. r here being how far the object is from the axis of rotation. And so you can see that one part of the block is closer to the axis of rotation than the other part of the block is. And so the two sides of that object would have different r's. However, since they're telling us to consider it to be a particle, a particle, particle means an object um, whose dimensions are so small uh, you can ignore them. And so basically, they're giving us permission to say that this entire 0.5 kilograms is the same distance from the axis of rotation, which would be 0.6 meters. So let's just calculate that. So we have a 0.5 kilogram uh, object, the block, at a distance of 0.6 from the axis of rotation. So 0.5 times 0.6 squared is 0.18. Again, the units there are kilogram meters squared. Then we have the rotational inertia of the bullet. It also can be treated like a particle. Its mass is one gram, so that's one one thousandth of a kilogram. And uh, it is also going to end up a distance of 0.6 from the axis of rotation. So let's see what we get for its rotational inertia. It's gonna be rather small. Yeah, it's uh, 0. 0.00036. We could probably just ignore it and get essentially the same answer. So now I'm gonna add this and this, the bullet and the block together, plus the rod, 0. 0.06. And that gives me a total of 0. 0.24, let's call that I total, of 0. 0.24036 kilogram meters squared. And that's the answer to part A. Uh, let's take a look at part B, where they ask us, or they tell us, if the angular speed of the system just after the bullet's impact is 4.5 radians per second. So after the impact, it's going to be going 4.5 radians per second uh, in that direction. Uh, they want us to find the speed of the bullet just before the impact. And as I said, anytime there's a collision, you should think law of conservation of momentum. In this case, angular momentum. So we're going to add up all the angular momentum before the collision and it's equal to all of the angular momentum after the collision. Now before the collision the only thing that's moving is the bullet and it's moving essentially in a straight line. And so the formula for angular momentum of an object moving in a straight line is m times rv sine theta. So that's what we're going to use for the bullet. So the mass of the bullet again in kilograms is one one thousandth uh, R. R is how far away the bullet is from the axis of rotation at the point of impact. So that's here, and so that distance is 0.6. Now sine of theta, the angle that we're talking about, is the angle between the velocity vector and the radius, and that is a 90 degree angle, sine of 90. We, ought, we should also stop for a moment and think about direction. Um, because the, the, the motion of the bullet is this way, which is tending to be the counterclockwise direction around the pivot point. And counterclockwise is traditionally considered to be the positive direction. So that's all that has initial angular momentum. Initially, the, the rod here is at rest. So then afterwards, the entire thing is all you know, stuck together. The bullet is stuck inside the block, and it's all moving as one object. And it's rotating. It's not moving in a straight line. And so the uh, formula for the angular momentum of a rotating or a spinning object is I omega. So we're, I'm just going to take uh, the total rotational inertia that we figured out times the omega that we were given. And so the total rotational inertia is 0 
and the omega that we were given is 4.5. Um, and suddenly, and this happens sometimes, you probably already noticed this, I suddenly realized I don't have any variables here. And that's because I left the V out of this equation over here. So I have M, I have R, I have V, and I have the sine of theta. Um, so that's what we're solving for. We're solving for that V over there. Uh, anyway, back to this. This, by the way, is also counterclockwise, so this is also positive. So now it's really just a matter of uh, plugging the numbers into the calculator. 4.5 times 0 0.24036. And I'm going to divide by 0 0.6. And I'm going to multiply by 1,000. And that gives me a very large number. Uh, uh, 1,802.7 meters per second. However, that is realistic for a bullet, and that's our final answer.